I was watching yesterday this interview on Brian's tech therapy channel with Rob, which is the project manager of home entertainment and sound. So he's a representative from Sony and he was breaking down the 2023 Sony TV lineup. But of course, I was interested about the A95L QD OLED gaming features and especially interested to know if the TV supports BFI, black frame insertion, motion blur reduction techniques. And yes, it does. So what I want to do is just to play a small section where he mentions that. And of course, I'm gonna have a link in the description of this video so you can check out the full interview. And I just wanna talk about that because I think one of the main things I've been trying to do on this channel is to raise awareness about motion clarity because nobody talks about it. Even reviewers, they get they get these new TVs and they don't talk about black frame insertion. It's just it's not even a thing. So to this day, I am not 100% sure that the S95C supports black frame insertion. I believe it does, but nobody talks about it. What is the persistence of the S95C? With black from insertion is it only 8.3 milliseconds does it look is it does it only work at 60 hertz 60 fps most likely but yeah i have no information so if you have the s95c tell me how it works and yeah how good is it what's the per, what is the persistence very easy just open the ufo test on a pc just have 60 hertz on the on the settings turn it on and then this 120 pixels per second UFO test should look perfectly clear. Just make sure that the, dis the scaling of the display is 100%. You have 100% zoom on the browser, which I don't have right now. And that's why it looks so big. So tell me if it works at 60 or if it works at 120 or if it doesn't. What is the motion clarity? So basically, if you are inserting a black frame... So if you have 60 hertz black frame insertion, literally, because these TVs are 120 hertz, what's happening is that the TV is running at 120 hertz. So the TV is basically inserting a black frame in between those 60 frames. So what's happening is that you are reducing the persistence of the frames from 16.6 milliseconds to 8.3. So basically 60 FPS, 60 hertz, looks like 120 fps so he mentions here let's let's listen to it and then i'll break it down for you because it gives me a little bit of hope the way he's talking about this but i do not want to take this out of context and you know make wrong assumptions because we have to understand this is live he has been speaking for almost an hour and yeah i mean we make mess we humans we make mistakes all the time and yeah, it's tough. I mean, I tried to make a video explaining the Blur Busters law to make it, you know, as perfectly precise as possible. I repeated that video like three, four, five times. And at the end, I made a mistake. <laughs> so it was not 100% um, okay with the Blur Busters chief because I made a mistake. At the end, one number that I said it was not, it was an assumption that I shouldn't made. So it is very difficult. So we can we can we should never, you know, listen to a, a one hour long interview from Digital Foundry or whoever, which I've done, and then, you know, quote <laughs> them on that. But you know, I my intention is not to take anything out of context or criticize or say this is right or this is wrong. I have the best intentions. My intention is to, I'm curious to know, and I would, you know, get this information, try to speculate to understand a little bit better, um, because I didn't have the chance to ask him the questions. So I would love to, I have my own questions. So Brian has its own questions. We all have our own questions. So I would love to have an opportunity like this one day to interview one of them. I would ask him, I was. <laughs> I was I would ask him so many questions 
and hard questions. Yeah, so maybe that, that's why they would not give me an interview. <laughs> Let's see what he has to say. There's motion blur reduction. Um, now, those are mutually exclusive technologies because motion blur reduction... He's talking about VRR and, and motion blur reduction on the A95L uh, Blackburn search. ...is essentially using a combination of either backlight manipulation, like blinking, or black frame insertion to remove motion blur. Also, I, I truly believe this, this person, I mean, he's, I'm sure he's super smart and he understands everything like in such a deep way, but he's probably talking to the, to the majority. So he's not gonna get into his small details or anything like that. So yeah, he's just saying, saying it so people kind of understand it. Um, and so you, you can't run variable refresh rate if you're inserting black, black frames, right? Those two, those two ideas, you know, don't work together. But you can yeah. choose one or the other. So, you know, tear-free gaming, VRR, if you're getting, you know, excessive motion blur, um, you can turn on the, the motion blur reducer, right? And it is actually possible to have, it is possible to have PWM, so pulse width modulation, and VRR together at the same time. Not black frame insertion, because literally if you're inserting a black frame, so you have 60 FPS, the TV is 120 Hertz, and the TV is just inserting literally a black frame. Yeah, of course, you cannot have VRR and, and black frame insertion at the same time, but it is possible to have a variable uh, frame rate and have PWM at the same time. It is possible. And it is actually already possible. There are some displays that can do it with some tricks. Then you have what you mentioned, the black equalizer. Uh yeah, so that's all he's, he says about that. So what I think he's, uh, when he says, you know, you either use VRR for a tear-free experience or you use BFI for the motion, better motion clarity. I think he's thinking about you're playing on the consoles and you're getting 60 to 70 FPS. Then, you know, you either get... You know, if the game drops below 60, you, you, you're not going to get a screen tearing if you're using VRR. But then if you want to get better motion clarity, you better play at a locked 60 and you use a black frame insertion. I think that's what he has on his mind, but that's just my speculation because otherwise, you he would be implying that the TV supports 120 of black frame insertion because... If you can get on the PC 120 FPS and the TV only supports the, the black frame insertion at 60, that's not a better motion clarity. It will be the same. So basically, 60 with black frame insertion is going to look like 120 FPS. And the difference is going to be you get half the brightness, but the persistence is going to be 8.3 milliseconds. The persistence is going to be the same. So if he's talking about you either get no screen tearing or you get better motion clarity, I guess that he's talking about this console gaming kind of situation because on the PC you can get 120 FPS. So if you can get 120 FPS, that's, that's, that's the best you can get on that TV unless that TV supports 120 black frame insertion. So it gives me a little bit of hope. That would be awesome if the TV supports 120 black for insertion but i don't really think so and the s95c is out there if you have it let me know test the tv and tell me is, does it only work at 60 can you make it work at 120 how good is it do you like it tell me i would like to know um because yeah on this lgc one man oled motion pro at 100 or 120 is just fantastic man fantastic it looks so good in motion i i am 100 percent sure that there's no way i show a gamer like a small kid or somebody who likes to play games i show them the sdr trick that i recommend with 120 fps with all the motion pro high i show anyone any gamer i show that there's no way they're gonna tell me, oh, I don't like it. No way. 
no way it just looks so good man because when we're playing a game we're moving the camera all the time so one of the main goals that i have in this channel has been to raise awareness about motion clarity because most people don't know most people don't know what the feature does and when they toggle that feature on oh it looks darker they just turn it off and reviewers don't talk about it that's a big problem too nobody talks about it that's why these tv manufacturers they just say okay nobody cares we're spending money resources and brain power to get this thing working nobody talks about it nobody cares it's a waste of time let's just get a brighter tv which is what sells and that's all they care about and yeah a brighter tv is better for black room insertion too so that's another thing with this brighter qd oleds you can get a much better black from insertion and you can even reduce you can reduce the persistence even more so to understand the trade-off between brightness and motion clarity i'm gonna have a link in the description of this video explaining the tailbot plateaus law which basically explains you why you cut the brightness in half if you use black frame insertion basically if you have 50 percent uh black frame insertion so you have 60 hertz the tv is running at 120 inserting one black frame in between you're cutting the brightness in half and if you have an, an even smaller persistence then you reduce the brightness even more so having brighter tvs like this a95l would be so fantastic for black frame insertion so yeah I hope it happens one day <laughs> again that we get this uh, TVs coming with 120 black from insertion and once the TVs become brighter then you can get better motion clarity they can reduce that pixel visibility time even more <laughs> so yeah I wish they improve the feature instead of eliminating it and yeah and nobody talks about it so let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions and especially if you have the s95c and you can give me the details about the black from insertion if it has black from insertion i believe it does but i'm not sure because nobody talks about it and yeah one of the hard questions before i end the video i mean the hardest question i would ask rob here would be if sony cares about accuracy and that is the ultimate uh, goal accuracy is the most important thing why they do not allow you to turn off the dimming that's a hard question because on the sony tvs from last year i'm not i don't know about this ones you cannot turn off you know the tpc and gsr on this lgc1 the equivalent on the sony which is basically dimming when you have a you know, logo on the screen and or when you have a static content so if you cannot turn that off what accuracy are you talking about <laughs> when you're playing a game you're gonna you're gonna have a logo on the screen most likely so the tv the, the screen is going to dim so if your focus is accuracy you should focus in eliminating anything that means dimming you do not want any dimming whatsoever so that's a very hard question that i would ask him hey, why sony is probably one of the few companies that don't let you turn off the dimming because you can turn off the dimming with lg oleds you can turn off tpc and gsr on the samsung you can also turn off the dimming on the philips oleds you can turn off the dimming panasonic I'm not sure, but I believe you can also. So why is Sony so focused in accuracy and you cannot turn off the dimming on the TV? That makes no sense. So I would try to ask him that question more elegantly. <laughs> but it would still be a very hard question to answer because what are you going to say to that? It makes no sense. And that's for me, that's a deal breaker with the Sony uh, TVs but well hopefully the a95l has that option on the service menu at least 
Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions.